The origins of the night worlds lie far back in mankind's forgotten past, before even the rise of the Emperor on Terra. These bastions of humanity have endured for millennia, fortified against the encroaching darkness, accumulating material resources and preserving ancient technologies. It was during mankind's first great exodus into the stars that the night worlds were established. Filled with hope and trepidation, swathes of human colonists struck out aboard the aptly named Long March ships that took decades to reach their pre-scouted destination worlds. These exoplanets were carefully chosen for their bounteous natural resources as well as their theoretically habitable biospheres. The brave colonists, who had left behind everything that they ever knew for a chance at extending human dominion across the galaxy, were quick to discover that habitable did not always mean safe. Some worlds were infested with lethal flora and fauna that did their best to devour the colonists whole. Others were wreathed in ferocious storms, or were already inhabited by indigenous species that resented the alien interlopers who had washed up on their shores. Ever more were made inhospitable by dangerous environmental factors such as exotic radiation, volcanic activity or viral outbreaks. The raw materials required by the colonists to create their founding settlements came from cannibalising the ships themselves. As such, they had no way to flee their dangerous new homes and no choice but to dig in and prevail. Some colonies, of course, were lost, yet a far greater percentage successfully took root. This was thanks to a combination of the indomitable human spirit and the miracle that was the standard template construct technology. STC machines could each replicate endlessly and faultlessly a specific device. They created atmospheric shelters, tools for farming and construction, means of power, transportation and the like. They also created the towering bipedal constructs known as night suits. These armour-plated walkers could traverse even the most perilous landscapes, endure the worst condition that the colony world could throw at them, and when suitably armed, fight in defence of the colonists themselves. Few Xenos races had an answer to these mechanical giants. Manufactured in large numbers, piloted by the most skilled and charismatic of the colonists, the knives, the knights, served as the mailed fists of human colonial expansionism. They smashed threats to mankind's new domains wherever they encountered them, and their pilots rapidly achieved a status somewhere between celebrity and war hero. What no one realised, that was even as the knight suits were serving the colonists, their thrones mechanicum were irreversibly altering the minds and souls of those that piloted them. Whether this was an intentional facet of the Knight STC or some strange ghost in the machine is ultimately irrelevant. The fact was that the longer the Knights fought for their settlements, the more authoritarian their pilots became. Within a few generations, the concepts of chivalric conduct, ritual observance, Loyalty and fealty that Thrones Mechanicum implanted had indelibly changed the cultural dynamic of the human colonies. The Knight Pilots became the first nobles and formed the original knightly houses. Those they protected took on an increasingly servile role, soon adopting the station of a feudal labour class. The Knight Worlds became ever more conservative and insular, they rejected advances in human technology and were slowly sidelined. They became a source of amusement to the intellectually and culturally superior masses of humanity. Ironically, it was the Nightworld's very isolationist nature 
and refusal to adopt new technologies that would protect them from the horrific apocalypse that devastated the rest of mankind. <laughs>